The film begins in the kingdom of Mauritius which was very beautiful and where there were many wonderful creatures. The evil fairy who plays the role of a guardian who protects this wondrous kingdom from human devastation. Sometimes she flies to the neighboring kingdom to visit her friends of all creatures and then returns to her kingdom of Mauritius. She meets three other fairies who inform them that the kingdom guards are holding someone who stole a gem from the jewel pond. She flies quickly towards this pond there, she finds the thief who was only a child. His name was Stephen. She took this precious stone from him to return it to the pond. When she speaks to him, she knew that he was an orphan and lived in another kingdom close to Maurice. When they shook hands, my daughter feels bad about that iron ring that was on her finger. So Stephen throws him away immediately like that, she knew he cared about her. So they started loving each other, seeing each other many times. The day of his birthday. Stephen confessed his love to her. This is how he gave her a real kiss of love. Years passed and Stephen no longer visited Phil badly. She became the main queen of the kingdom and also the most powerful. Yet she felt alone in Stephen's absence. One day, an army led by King Henry comes to attack the kingdom of Mauritius. The evil queen confronts him and asks him to leave in peace. But King Henry refuses and orders his soldiers to kill the son. The war broke out badly. Phil begins to defend his kingdom. With the help of all the creatures, she was able to defeat the king who orders his soldiers to flee immediately. Then, we find Henry who was dying on his bed because of a serious injury. Stephen was his servant. So he heard that whoever kills the Hex Queen, he will be given a reward. He will become king and also marry the king's daughter. Stephen decides to go to the queen and warn her that the king wants to kill her. Unfortunately, he was the one who cheated on her and drugged her and also cut off her wings and then brought her to the king. The king keeps his promise and now Stephen becomes king and marries his daughter. When Malefice woke up in pain from her broken wings, she couldn't believe Stephen's betrayal. With her supernatural power, she transforms a crow into a human who was once a real man named Diana. The shape-shifted man thanks her and promises that he will remain in her service for the rest of his life, since she saved him. So she asks him to tell her the necessary information about the other kingdom. She tells him that Stephen betrayed him to become king of the other kingdom. So sad, she turns her wonderful kingdom into a dark one and establishes a scary throne. Years have passed and Stephen has a daughter. My daughter heard that he was having a big party at his palace, so she decided to go too. Among the guests, there were three fairies who sought to reconcile the two kingdoms and live in peace. Upon entering the mansion, my daughter met Stephen who was very scared. Mal, son decides to give a present for his daughter by placing a curse on her, assuming that she will grow up peacefully until the age of 16 when a sewing needle will prick her finger and she will sleep forever. Stephen beg her, but in vain. Phil confirmed to him that this curse can only be removed if someone kisses him with a true kiss of love. And surely she is convinced that it will not happen, because Stephen has betrayed. Stephen gets angry and orders the destruction of all the sewing machines in his kingdom and puts them in his cell inside the palace. So who gives them to the three fairies to take the little princess to raise her in a distant place until she turns 16. Stephen orders his soldiers to search for hexes, but she has built a barrier to protect her kingdom. Indeed, the phenomena the little princess, to raise her in a distant place, out of evil spells, was able to discover where she is. So she goes from time to time to see the child and be close to her. Since the fairies didn't know how to raise a child and her heart is so kind, she began to protect the little princess. At the same time, Stephen was trying to get revenge on her, but his attempts fail in the face of her strong resistance. Stephen begins to lose his temper and remembers that his weak point was iron. So he orders all the blacksmiths in the kingdom to make iron chains instead of the fairies. My daughter takes care of the little one every day. The little girl Aurora, began to grow up and also to love malefics. One day, when Aurora grew up, she saw the barrier surrounding the kingdom of Mauritius. She was curious and wanted to know what was there. At the same time, the soldiers were close to them. Hex sensed the danger and quickly transformed into a wolf which attacked them. She also used her magic to hypnotize Aurora. This is how she was able to eliminate them and return to God in her normal form, under the influence of magic she took Aurora to her kingdom. When she woke up, she was very happy to be among all the creatures of this kingdom. Aurora feels safe when she's around. She is also proud to get to know Set before. She becomes happy with them. 
Nevertheless, she puts him to sleep again and she feels guilty for the curse she put on him when she was young as she loved him very much. Now Aurora lives happily with all the creatures in the kingdom she loved, but Hex was trying in vain to deactivate Aurora's curse. Aurora asks Malefice about her wings. She replies that the wings are not necessary and that they were stolen from her. At this time, Stephen is very afraid on his daughter because she has reached the age of 16. The moment when she will be cursed has arrived. Aurora decides to live with Malefic in her kingdom for the rest of her life. She was very happy with the decision. Aurora goes for a short walk and meets Prince Philip who wanted to go to Stephen's kingdom and whose path he did not know. He admires himself then she shows him the way. He go away. At this time, said is wrong. Sun watched what was happening between them. Divine said that this prince could be the perfect solution to end Aurora's curse if she is kissed by the true lover. But Hex was sure that wasn't possible. She cursed her like that, because she knows there is no real love. Aurora returns to the hut where she lived with the three maid. She tells them that tomorrow will be her 16th birthday and that she would like to live in the kingdom of Mauritius. Two of the fairies knew that she was an orphan, but the third knew that she was the king's daughter and that it was the wrong son who had placed this curse on her. Aurora rushed to Hex's to find out the truth. When she was at the height of her remorse, of her sadness, she decided to leave her and go to the palace with her father. When her father saw her, he ordered the guards to imprison her in his room to protect her from this curse. At that time, Hex met the prince that Aurora loved and she slept with her magic. Unfortunately, Aurora managed to escape her room and make it to the location of the burned sewing machines and where she puts her finger on the cursed needle. All of this was happening out of his control. As the curse took place. Stephen blames the three facts for everything that happened, but they tell him the curse can be lifted if a true lover kisses him. He replied to them that there is no real love. So Hex was able to bring the prince in Aurora, hoping the curse would be lifted. So the three fairies asked her to kiss him so that the curse would be removed. He kissed her, but the curse was not yet gone. Male fist intervenes. She holds Aurora's hand, asking her to forgive her and regretting everything she had done, she ends up kissing her on the head. Suddenly Aurora woke up and the curse was gone. Malefice then decides to bring her back to the kingdom of Maurice. Leaving the palace, and since Malefice's weak point is iron, Stephen had set up an iron trap for them. She fell in. The guards started attacking her and her energy started to weaken because she was very sensitive. With her magic, she was able to create a fire-breathing dragon to defend her. She then asked Aurora to run away for her life. But unfortunately the guards were able to surround her and the king who was putting on iron armor with chains and swords started beating her until he felt she was at the peak of her weakness. So he tried to kill her. At the same time, Aurora was trying to help her. She was able to free her wings. Thus, the latter began to feel her strength again. Immediately, she went to release the dragon she had created. But Stephen was able to restrain her with an iron chain and asked the soldiers to hit her with arrows. But this time she managed to break free and escape through the window. Stephen continued to hold onto the chain attached to her leg until she stood on one of the towers of the castle. So she got rid of him, but she couldn't kill him despite everything Stephen did. He ran after her until they both fell off the top of that tower. She managed to save herself, but poor Stephen died. The next morning, Aurora is ill. Phil turned around in Maurice and tore down the large barrier that had been built. Maurice returned to her beauty that was in the past and Aurora became the queen of that goodness. Eventually, Princess Aurora lived peacefully with Prince Philip. Thus, Malefice achieved his remarkable dream and punished both kingdoms.